Mr. Mildred, to Brother Lumless, brothers and sisters, friends and enemies. I just can't believe everyone in here is a friend. And I don't want to leave anybody out. The question, Penny, as I understand it, is the Negro revolt. And where do we go from here? Or what next? Now, a little humble way of understanding it, it points toward either the ball of or the bullet. Before we try and explain what is meant by the bullet of the bullet, I would like to clarify for something concerning myself. I am still a Muslim. My religion is still Islam. That's my personal belief. Just as Adam Clayton Powell is a Christian minister who he heads the Abyssinian Baptist Church in New York, but at the same time takes part in the political struggles to try and bring about rights to the black people in this country. And Dr. Martin Luther King is a Christian minister down in Atlanta, Georgia, who heads another organization fighting for the civil rights of black people in this country. And Reverend Garland, and I guess you've heard of him, is another Christian minister in New York who has been deeply involved in the school boycotts to eliminate segregated education. Well, in myself, I'm a minister, not a Christian minister, but a Muslim minister, and I believe in action on all fronts by whatever means necessary. Also, I'm still a Muslim. I'm not here tonight to discuss my religion. I'm not here to try and change your religion. I'm not here to go discuss anything that we differ about because it's time for us to submerge our differences and realize that it is best for us to first see that we have the same problem. A common problem, a problem that will make you catch heel whether you're a Baptist or Methodist or Muslim or nationalist. Whether you're educated or illiterate, whether you live on the Bolivar or in the alley, you're going to catch you just like I. We are all in the same boat, and we all are going to catch the same hell from the same man. He just happens to be a white man. All of us have suffered here in this country. Political oppression at the hands of the white man, economic exploitation at the hands of the white man, and social degradation at the hands of the white man. Now, in speaking like this, it does not mean that we are entire white. But it does mean we are into exploitation, we are into degradation, we are into oppression. And the white man does want us to be a dying, let him stop oppressing and exploiting and degrading us. Whether we are Christians or Muslims or nationalists or agnostics or this, we must first learn to forget our differences. We have differences. Let us differ in the closet when we come out something. Let us not have anything to argue about until we get finished arguing with the man. If the late President Kennedy could get together with Christian and exchange some weight, we certainly have more in common with each other than Kennedy and Christian had with each other. Well, we don't do something real, son. I think you will have to agree that we're going to be forced you got to use the ballot of the ballot. It's one or the other in 1964. It isn't that time is running out. Time has run out. 1964 threatens to be the most explosive year America has ever witnessed. The most explosive year. Why? It's also a political year. You see, uh, when all the white politicians will be back in the so-called Negro community giving you and me for some vote. The year when all the white political crooks will be right back in your, my community with their false promises. Building up our hope for them with their trickery and their treachery, with their false promises which they don't intend to keep. As they nourish these dissatisfactions, it can only lead to one thing, the explosion and now we have the type of black man on the scene in America today. I'm sorry, Brother Lerman, just doesn't intend to turn the other chick any longer. Can anybody tell you anything about all they against you? If they draft you, they send you to Korea and make you face a hundred million Chinese. But you can be brave over there. You can be brave right here. These odds are as great as those are. 
And if you fight here, you will at least know what you're fighting for. I'm not a politician, not even a student of politics. In fact, I'm not a student of much of anything. I'm not a Democrat. Not a Republican, and I don't even consider myself an American. If you and I were Americans, there'd be no problem. Those Ankees that just got off the boat, they're already Americans. Palaks are already Americans. The Italian refugees are already Americans. Everything that came out of a rope, every blue and eight thing, it is already an American. And long as you and I have been over here, we aren't Americans yet. Well, I'm one who doesn't believe in deluding myself. I'm not going to sit at your table and wet you yet with nothing on my plate and call myself a diner. You're sitting at the table doesn't make you a diner. I'm not you yet some of what's on the plate. Being here in America doesn't make you an American. Being born here in America does make you an American. Why, if birth made you American, you wouldn't need any legislation. You wouldn't need any amendment to the Constitution. You wouldn't be faced with civil rights filibustering in Washington, D.C. right now. They don't have to pass civil rights legislation to make a public an American. No, I'm not an American. I'm one of the 22 million black people who are the victims of Americanism. One of the 22 million black people who are the victims of democracy, nothing but disguised hypocrisy. I'm not standing here speaking to you as an American or patriot or a flag saluter or a flag wover. No, not a. I'm speaking as a victim of this American system. And I see America through the eyes of the victim. I don't see an American dream. I see an American nightmare. These 22 million victims are working up. Their eyes are coming open. They are beginning to see what they used to only look at. They are becoming political in nature. They are realizing that there are new political trends from coast to coast. As they see these new political trends, it's possible for them to see every time there's an election. The races are so close that they have to have a recount. A recount in Massachusetts to see who is going to give an us. In the same way and hold this land in Minnesota and in many other parts of the country. And the same with Kennan and Nixon when they run for president. It was so close they had to come all over again. Well, what does this mean? It means that when white people have evenly divided and black people have a block of voters of their own, it is left up to them to determine who's going to sit in the White House and who's going to be in the Dark House. As the black man's vote that put the prison administration in Washington, D.C. Your vote, your dumb vote, your John vote, your wasted vote put in an administration in Washington, D.C. It has seen fit to pass every kind of legislation imaginable, saving you turn to less than filibustering on top of that. You and my leaders have the audacity to run around clapping their hands and talk about how much progress we are making. What a good president we have. He wasn't good in Texas. He still can't be good in Washington, D.C. Because Texas is a lit state. It is in the same break. As Mississippi, no different, only they lent you in Texas with a Texas accent and lent you in Mississippi with a Mississippi accent. These Negro leaders have the audacity to go and have some coffee in the White House with a Texan. It's Sullivan Cracker. It's all he has and them will tell you me that he's going to be better for us because since he's from the South, he knows how to deal with the Southerners. What kind of logic is that? Let Island be president, he's from the South too. He should be better able to deal with them than Johnson. In this prison administration, they have in the House of Representatives 257 Democrats to only 177 Republicans. They control two-thirds of the House vote. Why can't they pass something that will help you and me? In the Senate, the 67 senators who are of the Democratic Party. 
Only 33 of them are Republicans. Well, the Democrats have got the government sew it up, and you're the one who sew it up for them. And what have they given you for? Oh, yes, in our fashion, just now getting around to some civil rights legislation. Just now I say everything else has gone out of the way. They're going to sit down now and play with you all summer long. The same old John Con game that they call filibuster. All the lot in cohorts together. Don't you ever think they're not in cohorts together for the man that is eating the civil rights filibuster is the man from Georgia named Richard Russo. When Johnson became president, the first man he stole when he got back to Washington, D.C. was Dickie. That's how tight they are. See, that's his boy, that's his Paul, that's his buddies. But they're playing that old con game. One of them makes believe this for you that he's got it fixed. Where that one is so tight against you, he never has to keep his promise. 